As you may know, I love trading options. However, in this video, I'm going to talk about the dark, the ugly side of option trading. I'm going to share with you four reasons why you should not trade options. Now you might be asking yourself, Randy, why in the world are you making a video on why I should not trade options? Don't you have a bunch of videos on why option trading is good? The answer to that question is yes. I do have a whole bunch of videos on option trading. But it would not be fair for me to only talk about why I love trading options so much. So in this video, I'm going to show you the dark side of it. I'm going to show you the ugly side of it and why you might not want to trade in options. And at the end, I'm going to show you another technique that we use to trade in the market that if you don't like option trading, you just might want to consider this technique. Because this technique enables us to accumulate over $18,000 in free stock last year. But first, in no particular order, here are the four reasons why you should not trade in options. First, option trading is complicated, especially when you're first learning how to trade in them. I mean, it's one thing to find a good company to buy the stock outright. For example, as you probably know, I like to trade in companies that are solid, mature, and consistently profitable and stable. Now that alone can be somewhat challenging to find. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of companies to research and choose from. Here on this channel, you know that I've narrowed my list down to about 200 companies that I feel comfortable trading in. But as an ops trader, once you've found a good company, you're really only just getting started. If you don't know the ins and outs of what affects the price of an option, you then have to learn how options work. In fact, the price of an option is not only made up of all the factors that influence the underlying price of a stock, but on top of that, you have the five Greeks, Delta, Theta, Gamma, Vega, and Rho. These five Greeks are affected by things such as the movement of the underlying stock, how much time is left until the option expires, how much volatility is in the market and in the underlying stock, how much interest rates are, and whether or not they have changed. In addition to that, I won't even go into Gamma because it's almost too complicated to explain in just a few sentences here. But let's just say that there are a lot more factors that go into the price of an option as compared to the price of a stock. As you can see, it can be complicated. And anytime something is complicated, there's lots of room for error until you become an expert or proficient at it. On this channel, I'm committed to helping you become a better stock and option trader. And every day, my patrons, their knowledge, it grows and they become better stock and option traders. But it can be complicated and it can take time to become a long-term successful option trader. The second reason why you might not want to trade in options is that it can take time to find good trading opportunities. It's one thing to find a stock that you believe is undervalued or that has the potential to increase in value or increases dividends over time. The challenge of option trading is that if you're selling weekly options, you actually have to come up with new ideas every single week. Now on my main option trading account, I like to trade in monthly options. That means that approximately 12 times a year, I'm having to come up with a place to put my capital to work at. On top of that, we have a very diverse portfolio. At any one point in time, we have anywhere from 30 to 40 positions on. So technically, we have to look to replace 30 to 40 option positions every single month. That can take some time. If you're an option trader and not having enough time is one of the reasons why you're having a hard time trading successfully, check out my Patreon because that might help you come up with some ideas that you can use to make some option trades. Every day I go through the over 200 stocks that I'm willing to trade options in or own outright looking for option trading opportunities. When I find a new opportunity, we close out a position that's nearly worthless and put that capital right back to work in that new position. But all that, it just takes time. So if you're short of time, option trading, it might not be for you. The third reason why you should potentially not trade in options really comes in two parts. As you may know, we like selling options. I love getting monthly premium paid to me up front. Every single month over the past couple of years, I've made a video detailing how much net cash we put into our pocket by trading in options the previous month. That amount is thousands and thousands of dollars. Our worst month over the past several years was just over $7,000. And our best month, it was right around $20,000. I love getting cash flow every single month by selling options and collecting dividends. But I've had people ask me in the comments section here on YouTube, Randy, why didn't you just buy the stock outright? You placed a bullish option trade and received the option premium up front but the stock went way up. You missed out on a great opportunity to have a really big gain. And you know what? They were right. But there are also times when a stock looks like it's setting up for a very bullish move, but then it goes nowhere or it goes sideways, or sometimes it even goes down in price. That's why I love option trading. You can win on your trade, pocket the entire option premium up front, and actually be wrong. Now please understand, I do like trading stocks outright. In fact, I take a percentage of my monthly option trading cash flow and buy stocks outright with that cash. And in that portfolio, I don't trade any options in it. However, my main engine for cash flow is selling options. And yes, we do miss out on some potential large gains, but we also miss out on potential dead trades, 
where if we had bought the stock outright, we have been sitting in that trade for quite a while, making absolutely nothing or possibly even losing money. The second part of this has to do with what you read and hear on the internet about option traders and the high potential for very large losses. And I understand the argument there. As I just mentioned, when you sell an option, you usually pocket a small percentage of the overall stock price. For example, our goal is to make at least 20% annualized non-leverage on our capital. When you break that down into 12 months, that means that our goal is to achieve at least a 1.67% return on capital every single month. Well, what happens when a position moves against us by more than that 1.67% in option premium that we received up front? Well, we could be showing a loss in that position. However, as you know from watching my channel, we have a number of tools that we can use to fix a position once it has gone against us. That will enable us to turn a losing position into an actual winning position. In addition to that, if the stock goes against us and the put option we sold is assigned to us, well, it just means that we get to buy the stock at a cheaper price than it was selling for when we sold that option. On top of that, we got a head start in stock ownership because we received the option premium up front. I have found over the years of trading options that if you trade in good, solid, mature, and consistently profitable companies, although you have some positions that go against you, you have many more that go your way. And when you have positions that go against you, if you know how to use options, you literally have almost unlimited options or techniques that you can use to fix those positions. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, and I'd love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button and go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification while you're down there. The next reason why you might not want to trade in options is one that I get from a lot of people. In fact, it alone might be the one reason why you decide to not trade in options. Here you see a trade we did today in Campbell Soup, ticker symbol CPB. As you can see here, on average, over the past 10 days, over 2 million shares of Campbell Soup have traded each day. That's a really nice volume in a stock that makes it easy to buy and sell. But what about options? How much volume was there today in that $44 cash secure put option that we sold? Notice at the red arrow here that we're looking at the May 20th option expiration chain. If you follow the orange arrow over to the $44 strike price to the right side, notice that the volume for this put option was only 98. That's quite a bit less than 2 million shares, isn't it? As a matter of fact, 6 of those 98 contracts were the ones that we traded. So our trade made up 6% of today's volume. Because of that, as you can see, the difference between the bid and the ask is 20 cents. If you notice in the red rectangle under volume, notice of the five option strike prices that I show you here, there were only a total of 205 option contracts that traded today. Now remember that each one of those contracts is the equivalent of 100 shares. So a little over 20,000 shares worth of put option contracts were traded in these five strike prices today. You see there's a lot less liquidity in option trading than there is in buying and selling stock outright. Because of that, as option traders, we always use limit orders when making a trade. Personally, I don't mind trading in low liquidity assets. Real estate is one of the lowest liquidity assets there is, and I've made a small fortune trading in real estate. Options are much easier and quicker to get in and out of than real estate. But if you only want to trade in highly liquid assets, option trading, it might not be for you. However, if inspired of these four things that I mentioned, if you still want to be an ops trader, if you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. All in this video, I mentioned four reasons why you might not want to be an option trader. The thing about trading options is that it can enable you to get free stock. Yes, I said free stock. If you want to see how we were able to accumulate over $18,000 worth of free stock last year, check out the video at the link above in the description below so that you too get your free stock. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.